fly to moon that would, I mean, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like you're looking at PL, like what do mm -hmm. we do with this hero? I mean, it's not like Morphling is necessarily terrible, but I mean, they don't really have a true answer to PL right now because I assume he goes Manta at some point. Yeah, so if course. there's an Orchid or anything like that on Queen of Pain, so that's not mm -hmm. really going to be that much of an issue. Like when I look at this hero, I think of Mjolnir and there's not really a Mjolnir holder on Flight of Moon. No. I, I do agree. I think the last pick needs to solve PL because Undying bad. doesn't, Rubik doesn't. Crop and Morphling are okay for a while, uh, but eventually the Morphling gets a struggles in this matchup. Um, so, yeah, I agree. Shaker is a possibility that doesn't seem too interesting. Um, I, I'm even, I'm trying to think of just in this patch, like what, what PL counters are there if PL gets picked this late and you don't have I would love to already? Know. Like what one in my pubs, I would love to know. So solution please. is there. A Radiance um, hero, a Mjolnir hero. Remaining. That's all I can think of. Ever. Necrophos could be decent. I think he's pretty good right now in general, and he fits their lineup in terms of pushing. Necro mm -hmm. is a very good hero against PL. It's the constant AoE damage. He buys Radiance. He can go Shroud against him. PL doesn't really want to buy Nullifier. Of course he can. Um, but that, that would be a go-to pick for Flight of Moon as well. They do play it. Um, but it's a possibility that Liquid just ban it out even here. Because Necro is also good against Mars. Uh, the Shadow Demon matchup is annoying, though, for Necro. So maybe Liquid don't worry too much. They can always just Demonic Purge him, and then he can't use Ghost Shroud for, is it seven seconds? Or is it eight? Mm, that's true. It's a Kill long Liquid's time. Yeah, pick. that is a uh, Shadow Demon is one count. of the harder counters at seven seconds. Um, yeah, they're not worried. They're going to ban Timber, so which would uh, another solution, I guess. Is Axe, is Axe potential here? Is that even good yeah. against PL? Yes, I, I mean, would say. Okay. It feels okay until a certain point of the game, right? I mean, you yeah. have Crimson Guard, possibly, for that hero, but... Yeah, it's like a Ten timing thing, because X remain. hates being mana-burned, right? Um, yeah. When the Diffusal Manta comes out. You get one and you're done. Remain. Yeah, basically. I mean, is this... I mean, Liquid is going to be picking first, so Flight of Moon can uh, respond with something. And they only have eight seconds, actually. Uh, so this will Radiant likely be team. a... I mean, they could go... Mira. All right, Marana. Marana. We're seeing a lot of Marana. Right-click carry... Uh, it's Corp pretty flexible Mana. in terms of what lanes you can go to, though, right? Or is, does PL play mid in this? Uh, it's a possibility. They could put PL mid against Quap. They could also put Mirana mid against Quap because it's something Liquid have done uh, before. Actually, recently, they played Koikva mid against Limp Queen, I think, uh, on Ten that Mirana. So remaining. could definitely see that come out from Liquid. Um, it's another hero that can remaining. kill Tombstone. You have range, you have attack speed. It's it's pretty good. And it's comfort, right? Um, mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Ooh. That's some AoE. All right. AoE and catch. Yep. Going to be Iceberg on that. So it will be an offlane Queen of Pain for General. They've also liked playing Very that. Nice. General looks to not, not have, have the Arcana, Arcana, though. Unfortunately. Unbelievable. I was looking the forward to casting The face is blue, though. Wait, what, what mask is that? Is that some sort of uh, masquerade thingy? It doesn't cover the bottom of her nose, right? Yeah, I don't think I've seen this face before. Or is it just the glow in the eyes? Do you know what I mean? Doesn't her face look blue to you? Isn't her face usually blue? Look at her skin in general. Oh, it's a different hue though, right? Don't you see what it's I mean? Light it's light blue. Like, it's like brighter until the bottom of the nose where it's darker. This is not the regular crop face. Or All maybe I'm having some Cinderin graphics bug. I don't know, man. But it, it is, looks like... I, I'm not seeing nose. what you're seeing. You'll see it in game. But I'm glad that Morphling has some cosmetics to cover up that absolutely atrocious model. So, like you said, Iceberg will be playing Kunkka mid. Um, I haven't really seen Kunkka Radiance lately, but is that a possibility this game, considering you're going against a PL, or is that still not uh, a consideration? Uh, to put to put Kunkka against PL? No, to get Radiance on Kunkka. Oh, it's get been Radiance. Like a bit since yeah. I've seen that. I, I definitely think that's uh, that's a go-to here for Iceberg. I think he should. Um, there is a bit of a concern if he gets swapped in, like even if you have Radiance, that the amount of overwhelming burst Liquid has could be a problem. Since you're playing without a save, uh, you can get Soul Catchered, Venge swapped, and just blown up, basically. Um, mm. If you go Radiance first, right? Usually players will go like two Braces Radiance, but maybe there's an Armlet in between here. Maybe he goes BKB first. Uh, BKB obviously an incredible item against Liquid here. They kind of have very little to solve that until PL is farmed. Um, or Marana. Marana does do a hard right click these days. So, man, I love these loading screens. This is just a real dream. 
and then we get blessed with an, an older one here. No, this is a new one. Never mind. They're just not doing anything. There we go. Good job, Liquid. The thing I like about Liquid's drafting in general is even though you kind of know what players are playing what, you don't necessarily know what lanes. Like, Koikva probably will go mid on Mirana, but we've seen them switch things up just because a lot of these players have just so much experience. Um, kind of with these flex picks to a degree. So, I mean, did we talk about the PL Shadow Demon combo, Cinderin? That's going to be kind of dirty. Getting extra illusions. Yeah. It's definitely going to be something for later on uh, that Flight and Moon have to be concerned about, but very early on, it's not that dangerous. Like, the illusions just get one shot by Kunkka Cleave, right? So, mm -hmm. but obviously, once the farm comes in, definitely something to consider. <laughs> and I would say more importantly, I think offensive disruption and morphling is going to be more powerful because, uh, like, eventually, if, if Flight and Moon initiate a fight and their morph gets disrupted, they have to kill those Illus immediately, mm -hmm. or they just... They're, they're going to kill his backline. I uh, think just kill his own team. The the PL yeah, illusions are not as powerful until they swarm. Super value Shadow Demon game though. Yeah, and they first that. picked it. Very nice. Yeah. So. Well, sometimes you got to give something up to get what you want, yep, Cinderin. That they, is true. They really wanted Morphling. Looks like Vtune will be playing uh, mid lane as the Morphling, so will not be. Oh, the Queen of Pain we already talked about being off lane this game for general. Mm-hmm. But Kunkka, okay, now Kunkka's going mid, maybe. Are they? How are they doing this? Is he just blocking for him and TPing for Flight of Moon? Uh, I think they're waiting to see the matchups, but I'm not sure what mm -hmm. matchup they would want the Morph against that could potentially be mid. Because I, I don't think Morph would want to lane against neither Morana nor PL, right? I mean, maybe the PL matchup's good, but it's really good for Kunkka. No, he's just chilling. I guess he was... Maybe they were checking to see if there was an aggressive trial lane coming. And now that they showed PL and Venge top, he's like, okay, I can safely go bottom. That's probably what it was. Um, they're just making sure they got the lane matches they wanted. Okay. Morph against uh, Mars Shadow Demon is, is pretty good after a couple of levels. Uh, I've, played, I've played the matchup myself, Mars against Morph, quite a lot. And Mars loves this for the first few levels, and then he hates it. So you gotta put on the pressure as Boxy and Taiga in this lane. Uh, Morph is always a, a very bad hero, level one and two. Mm -hmm. But Undying Foxy is... Foxy and company, you know, yeah. Undying is going to go to town with Decay. This is his uh, his use in the game, is to decay people early and then get copied by Morphling later on uh, for that value second tombstone. Spare me the tears. I mean, we didn't really talk about overall lineup, Cinder. Who do you actually... What, what side do you like this, this time it's around? It's pretty even. Um, no really clear favorite. I, I don't feel like somebody made a massive oversight in the draft or got like 10th pick out drafted or something. Uh, both teams have their own ways of winning with... Oh, hang on. Boxy is, Boxy is actually just gonna super die dead. Oh. He's going to die. Another decay in five oh, seconds. Oh, one decay expired. He's tangoing. Okay, he could live. Yeah, I could have sworn V2 was going to gonna be in range for that last right click, but it wasn't to be this time. But either way, he's going to chase him off. Uh, not going to expend the other Decay, so we'll go back to lane as Vtune forcing Taiga out as well. There's two stacks of Shadow Poison right now. So that is a, a good start for this lane uh, for Flight of Moon as Boxy again will continue to take Decays. Has one Mango on Always Want to Fly, but the lane is pushing. Yeah, but he has a stick too. So every time Taiga goes for these Shadow Poisons, he's actually just decaying his own Mars, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, I guess uh, you could say that. It's kind of a problem. Like he really needs these shadow poison uses to either come from fog or to reach high stacks for it to be worth it to spam like this. But he kind of has to do it, right? Okay, that's four stacks. That's pretty good. He does have twelve decay stacks though, so we'll probably tank that up pretty nicely. Uh, that will probably be our first blood bottom. But while we have time, let's talk about the mid matchup, which is Koikva versus Iceberg, Marana versus Kunkka. Uh, how do you like that hero versus hero matchup? Mm, pretty even, I would say. Uh, Mirana has obviously has the range advantage and wants to trade hits a lot. Or, well, not trade, but rather just hit you all the time because she has that. Is it 630? It's 630 range. Um, but in the meantime, Kunkka will get damage in with Tidebringers. He will secure CS very easily a lot of the time. So... Top yeah. lane, by the way. They are getting very low. The courier is going to be saved thanks to the magic missile. Insania taking heavy damage. Fable, not enough. 
to actually get the kill on Insania. Mickey is forced to use a salve in the meantime. A very close double kill there. But Liquid gets out with just a sliver of HP. Yep. I was going to turn the sights. And something to keep in mind, of course, about this top lane is that the Queen of Pain matchup into PL. Usually, side lane Co-op wants to dominate the lane by maxing Shadow Strike. But against PL, he will clearly skill a doppelganger, and every time you Shadow Strike, he will just doppelganger it off. So General is maxing out Scream of Pain here for the burst. And that might have caught them a little bit off guard there, just how much damage the Co-op had on level 3. Mm -hmm. Might not have accounted for that. Getting a pull in here, but it's going to get stolen. Oh, bottom lane, always want to fly, getting a little bit low here. Disruption on to the Morphling, into the spear, into the trees! Oh! God, that burst damage, Soul Catcher. Not even needed, actually. He doesn't even have that leveled right now. He just blew up. Enough Shadow Poisons. Yep. And this is, uh, they can still do this for a bit, but it's gonna get hard pretty soon. Oh, Always wanna what? fly, <laughs> my goodness. Miscalculated this, uh... that, perhaps, or just wanted a free trip back to the fountain? Was it free? <laughs> <laughs> to some cultures, death is free, Cinderin. Oh, oh, Morphling jumps in onto Boxy. He's going to get speared again into the trees. Going to continue the pressure, though. But looks like Liquid is very happy with this exchange. But there's the Soul Rip getting v tuned back to a nice state. Yeah. Does not they have should be so happy to seconds. get two kills, though. Like, I don't oh, yeah. think they should have got these two kills bottom. Maybe the first one was a possibility. Like, until Morphus 5, there are kills. As a, It's possible to get kills here. But after he's 5, it's definitely not the case. But uh, I just thought Flight of Moon were off to such a great start in the lane that they probably wouldn't have happened. Okay, uh, interesting. Well, he just went in, back the other way. Good to go. It's so hard from the back on Mars. Mars has three armor, and obviously he hasn't skilled Bulwark, which I agree with in this lane. He has to go for the aggressive build. But it means when Morph gets on top of him and he doesn't have Spear, he is in trouble. Morph hits mm -hmm. very, very hard right now. Well, that cost him. Uh, looking at the CS right now, Kunkka is leading the way 35-4. and four. Marana not too far behind, so relatively even mid lane. Um, Iceberg, of course, Dyer's having the advantage of being able to X marks himself back into the fountain repeatedly. Which I think he's done at least once, maybe twice. Radiance bottom tower. Yeah, nice. we'll take morph. out the siege creep mid. We have another go on morph, huh? Yeah, four Wait. stacks right now. So. Wait for him to fifth stack. Still gonna hurt, but. A little bit. He's up to strength. I always want to fly. Just continuing the pressure though, trying to make as much space for the. The morph right now. V Tune sitting on 27 and 10 CS versus the attack. the PL, which is 35 and 8. So obviously yep. Liquid getting the better exchange in that, despite kind of being on the back end in that top lane for a yeah. bit. The the trade off is the off laners though, right? Mars has 18 and Quop has 30. So while PL is doing well, so is the Queen, uh, doing quite a bit better than Mars. Uh, currently 300 net worth ahead of him, and that is considering Mars also got a good kill, right? Like if, if these kill, this kill and assist bottom didn't happen for him, he would probably be 500 behind the queen. So, it's a it's a give a takes a give and take situation where I would say Fly to Moon overall should be pretty happy with this. All three of their cores are doing uh, doing pretty well. Oh, always want to fly. Like Force to Tombstone. General. Okay, Tombstone placed. Always oh, want to fly with damage. three stacks of Shadow Poison. Boxy taking heavy damage in turn, but it looks like Always want to fly knows that he will die one way or the other. Question is, will there be an actual trade? Taiga looks like he'll live. No way for him for another five seconds. So again, better exchange here for Team Liquid. Had the ten sticks. Oh, and General even rotated and didn't get anything. He will get the Mars now, but if he has to Sonic for this, he's going to be really sad. I don't think he needs to. He's got Scream up in just a moment. Just need some vision. And down he goes eventually. General, though, is leveling quite nicely. Like you said, level 6 already has a Sonic Wave. So out-leveling the carry on Liquid. Uh, a lot of that, of course, has to do with Aloha Dance not really being in range for some of these big waves. But looking at Iceberg, I mean, no big surprise here. Uh, actually, is Treads normal? I thought he was Phase Boots is the normal this year. His Phase Boots queued up, but went Treads. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't really know what the trend is right now. If you buy one significantly more than the other, they have their own strengths, obviously. Um, 
Dyer's the face boots giving the, the higher damage, but the, obviously a lot of tankiness on a hero like Kunkka pays double because of the ghost ship, so having uh, having more strength. It kind of depends Ooh. how much magic and physical damage you're against. Them. Torrent Insane does connect on Insania in the mid lane. He'll be X marks back. Sploosh. A couple more right clicks. And don't ever say that again. Sploosh, seriously? Yeah, he This is a PG him. stream, Cinderin. Oh. Okay. Spla sploosh? You get what? Nothing. You can say splash. Say it with me. Splash. Isn't there a g game in Zelda called <laughs> Sploosh Kaboom or something? You're, you're asking the wrong guy. I never played that game in my life. I'm going to go with Sploosh. You're probably right, though. I mean, you're usually right in these scenarios, so just assume the best for yourself. Yeah. I would trust uh, myself yeah, over back... you any day. No I know. offense. I actually still remember the first time you corrected me about something that I was horribly wrong on, and it was the spelling of breathe. Breath, breath, For some fire. reason. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't my fault because my teacher taught me that, Sindarin, okay? I vividly remember, unless it was a dream. You should sue Maybe them. Life You're in general American. You could probably live your life on that. <laughs> yes, that's what Americans love to do. Sue for literally no reason. General TP yeah. to the bot lane does have Sonic Wave available, but reinforcements... Smoked for Liquid are here. Little do they know, Quap has actually backed off, surprisingly enough. Not sure what that's all about. Oh, We're going to see a disruption into the spear, onto the morph. Tombstone is down. Morphling taking heavy, heavy damage. Looks like he might live three stacks of Shadow Poison right now. As Insania, looks like we're going to have some TP support now from Iceberg himself. Koikva with plenty of leaps to get out to safety. General actually pumping his sonic wave, but not able to go through with it. We'll use it here. They'll find the Marana first. Not able to kill anybody with that, but Iceberg, a nice out a second hero now. Finally, Boxy finds somebody with his rebuke, but it's a three for one, triple kill for Iceberg. Really good rotation. The biggest, the biggest thing about this play was actually the positioning on, of Undying when it started. Let's see if Boxy gets out first, though. I think he will. General doesn't have yeah, General, mind. not much mana. Uh, but, so, they kind of read that Liquid were going for this aggressive play, and Undying was in position again in front of Morph, so when Morph got disrupted, Koiko couldn't find a lineup for the arrow. Radiant like, Undying was just blocking the whole time. And then he puts down the Tombstone, and that starts being a distraction. Maybe even trying to block arrow with that as a possibility as well. Um, it gives them ample time to bring in both Kunkka and Quap and, and use their... Obviously, extremely powerful heroes right now for that. So that was very nicely done. And look at Iceberg just shooting up a net worth from that. Now he's 2k he's, ahead of Koikva mid and level 11. He is uh, splooshing all over there the place, far. Cinder and Iceberg. Double Bracer, like we attack. talked about. Very close to Sacred Relic, which of course means that he will be going for Rapier. Just kidding, it's Radiance. But very good against PL. And if he can get that really quick, it's a super fast Radiance. snowball him. For sure. Liquid kind of have to defend this mid tower. He's. Quickly almost lost it here. It's 350 HP left, minute 11. And once the map opens up, this Radiant lineup can play super aggressive. When they get Radiance, Kunkka, they have Quap, Rubik. Oh, they're actually going to start on a mid. Yep, X into Torrent. He does have two leaps available, so we'll be good to go. Has support from Boxy as well, but this is enough space for Iceberg to take out the tier one tower, so they'll be very happy with that. Yeah, for sure. I want to talk a little bit about Marana because, as you know, I haven't been casting as much lately. Bottom lane, though, general four stacks of Shadow Poison. Is that enough? How much damage is that? No, he should be fine. 130 HP. This item build on Marana. We talked about it. How? These days, we're seeing a lot of just rush of MKB, and it looks like exactly what Koikva is going for. What is the reasoning for that over like some of the old items we used to see? Um, you get a lot of attack speed from Leap, obviously. Um, and then the MKB proc is very powerful. And it pierces evasion, of course. Um, so... In the, I, guess, I guess part of it is just in this meta, it's very popular to buy, say, Halberd. Uh, he also knows he's playing against a Kunkka that will probably go Halberd or Radiance this game, so that's already value. Morph will want Butterfly at some point. And I think it's just like a... It's a damage equation thing. You could go Maelstrom with your attack speed, but Radiance if you hit an arrow, this gives you single attack. target potential, right? You can kill the guy you arrow on right. your own. Uh, and that's really valuable compared Radiance to Maelstrom. Top lane, this by the way. Really Insania rough. gets blown up. Uh, but it was a trade for a tier 1 bot, as nobody was there for Flight and Moon to defend. 
Uh, we haven't really talked much about Mickey right uh, on this PL. He is closing in on his defusal. So it's not like the worst time, but looking at Iceberg, he is very close to finishing Radiance now. Mid lane, we're going to see some TPs. X marks the spot. Boxy is going to take the brunt of this damage in the form of the Shark into the Torrent now. Not sure they can actually get the kill. I have another X and three, three, but Dyer's nice spear. It yeah, just gets speared attack. across the map. Looks like that'll break things up. Did force four Liquid Heroes to show there, though. And this makes General feel very confident bottom, bullying Mickey away from CS. So they're taking all the small victories they can get. Fly to Moon, and so far it's ramped up to a 2k gold lead. Um, I, I wonder... Like what the what the plan is for them here? I think they want to keep map controlling and fighting with four, and just let more farm full on until he has the full on E blade, and then he's gonna join, and that's when it gets really scary. Mm -hmm. So potentially it could try to overwhelm them in fights by being five, um, if they if they manage to find a fight because Morphling is unlikely to join at the current point in time. Uh, but their waves are just being pushed very nicely. General going for the Necronomicon build. You have a Kunko who's pushing out mega fast with his Sacred Relic. And the Morph took care of business top. He's rewarding himself with some jungle. And Insania has to show <laughs> to clean up the trash, basically, top. And now Morph should go back up and shove it again. So, yeah. Textbook from uh, Flight of Moon here. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely looking good right now. Uh, how important is it for them to start fighting once the Radiance is online? Or does that just accelerate your farm even more and you just try to take more farm? In I mean, you have the, like you talked about, the Necro 1 on General. So the five we'll be farming smoke, the right. jungle and pushing out. What's that? There's the five-man smoke from Liquid. They're going to make a five-man move now. Okay. They feel like the oh. there's not enough. They're not getting enough out of the map, and they hit an item timing with Diffusal and PL. So. Well, they might get a courier if they and want it's to obviously show tanks. themselves. Nope, they but they not. only got one for it. Yeah, they might not even get a kill if. Vitun Ooh. does have Ghost Scepter right now. He's going to run into Mars. Oh my the god! Spear completely misses, though. Waveform. Arrow misses. Has not expended his TP. Yep, arrow misses as well. He is completely surrounded. And that is a very ambitious TP. Will get canceled. Vitun. Oh, he does have another waveform, though. This is going to take a while. Four stacks of Shadow Poison and one last right click from Quick. So they do I find it. Stars. Took forever. That's why they five men smoked. They knew they were gonna miss half their spells, and then <laughs> you have backup spell. You know, obviously it we happens. can see everything. If he waveform TP'd, he's out of there, right? But I was not expecting that. X marks uh, shark, but disruption, nice disruption does cancel it. Insania nicely played overall. There's the the spear onto the Kunkka. It does have the radiance online now, by the way. The tombstone decimated in quick succession. There's now Iceberg on Fire the left. Five stacks of Shadow Poison. Oh, gonna get killed up a huge cleave as Insania is gonna get turned around on. It's gonna be a trade. Venge for Undying. So not exactly what either team was looking for, but... Yeah, and no, I think no Insania was down. not expecting to die to Undying there because nobody knows how Undying ulti works. So <laughs> probably thought he was fine. Is this a reference to me? Talking yeah, about it's that a reference stupid... to myself too, not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, okay, when good. we were talking about it, I don't remember when we were talking about it, if it was like a month ago or something, I thought it worked differently than it did. <laughs> oh, I didn't even notice. So oh, yeah, yeah. I guess we're both oh, at man. fault. I mean, I, I stand by what I said, though. It's one of the few, maybe Terrorblade is another one, heroes where his ultimate just doesn't feel like an ultimate. Uh, it's more like Tombstone is. General. Sun Sunder is pretty. It's a pretty good spell. Let's it's, be honest. It's more situational than meta, though. Meta is like god tier. That is a normal ultimate, that is true. wouldn't you say? That is true. Of course, yeah, you, you could argue that you could... Uh, I actually think I might have suggested that a long time ago to well, Cinderin, rework. Let's be real. Terrorblade, it used to be his ultimate. It's actually flip-flopped, I believe, four times literally in the past 15 years. When was years. meta his ulti the last time? I that is am, very uh, long well, ago. It was before Dota 2. That's true. But it, I yeah, promise you it really changed like ago. three or four times. Yeah, that sounds about right. Dyer. It does feel like an ulti, doesn't it? Like, just in concept. Yeah. You no, turn into this massive demon, just like Lycan like Shapeshift or Dragon Knight ulti. But maybe that's the reason they want it to not be an Thunder, ulti, so that it's Thunder used to be sense. Life Leech as well. That's true. Oh, that different. was so broken. We could run with that in laning stage. Oh my yeah, that was god, great. you remember that? It was like a little Pugna channeling. Leech while you run away. Oh shit, that version of TB was so oh, broken. Perfect. You Time just reminded me. 
they know we're talking about old concepts here, so this is a perfect pause. Thank you. Yeah, so let's play an pause. old game. Musical chairs was invented in the 20s. Uh, I need to look this uh, up now. Around the same time the chair was invented, so it <laughs> only makes sense. I don't, chair definitely did not exist before that. At least it wasn't patented, right? Right. That's for sure. It's all about the patents. That's how Apple survives every day, Cinder, is taking other people's ideas and patenting them, you know? Yeah. Don't you love it? No. Okay. All right, let's do some some item updates while we wait. VTune, as we know, is going for the E-Blade. Uh, still a decent a ways away, about... Eh, it's only 1,100, actually, for that Eagle song to finish that bad boy up. Do you think that's the item timing that they're waiting for, or is it... I guess the combination of that and Iceberg's BKB, probably the next big power spikes? Uh... Yeah, both of those. I, I, they're probably going to overlap, almost, aren't they? That would be perfect. How far is he away from BKB? He needs about 2k, 2k and a bit on Kunkka, and Morph needs 1500. Oh, sorry, 1100 only, actually. So, yeah, somewhat same timings, like two minutes apart. Uh, it depends on their read on the game at the time. Like, when Morph gets the E-Blade, he gets really strong, so if they're feeling it, they can go force a fight. They have the choice of waiting another two minutes because looking at liquid it's not like liquid's going to take the fight to them and really force them to, to fight back right like mm -hmm. I, I think liquid because their last five man smoke didn't really bring much success with it and the fight that they took in on their side Dyer's of the jungle Dyer ended up in a draw um i think they might be a little bit hesitant to just flat out run at the enemy team it is really a very very strong uh, radiant they're facing right now general knows he's safe here just toy with them a bit blink out got the mech and mickey right now he does have the hood i believe actually the courier was killed with the hood on it if i'm not mistaken yeah so we'll have to wait on that basically i'm assuming that's just because of the shotgun morph not Swifter only be just blown up in every single scenario uh but by the time these items come online for flight of moon koiko will have that mkb as bottom lane always want to fly looks like he'll find his way to the grave and they got the arrow now as well, top of the general. Ooh. Two big kills. Wow. Oh, well, one big kill and one undying kill. Um, but <laughs> it's two kills. Well, undying does have a large model. Does that count for mm. anything? He didn't ulti, It's a though. big kill. True. He needs to ulti to have a big Oh, kill. Insania. Nice move from Vtune here. Should give him this kill. Turned into the Venge. Got his stun. Started out with the Adaptive Strike Strength. Top tower. And oh, stole an arrow. Radiant we'll go down eventually. Oh, wasting as much time as possible. He's doing a That's wonderful perfect. job at that. Yeah. Vtune will claim it for himself. Radiant's top but tower. And Mickey also gets top tower. Tier one yeah. top. Yeah. Yeah. And a courier. Has been Ooh, this has been a really that. nice minute for Liquid. They pulled back their advantage from uh, Flight Moon by 2k and found kills, tower, uh, as well as getting some Radiance important map control. Getting this top tier one tower and starting to push in this gives them access to the triangle. Mid lane could be dangerous though, Koikva. Could be. Mars ult on top of Kunkka right now. Arrow's gonna completely whiff. Actually, that was stolen from Aloha Dance. Looks like the Mars ult was used to very little avail as he's gonna now be turned around and that's gonna be an easy one to fly to Moon. By the way, that curry that was killed was V-Tunes, but he did not buy the Eagle Song with it. So, has to go purchase that manually. Yeah. Does have enough to do that now. Oh, they see Koi. Like Shadow, Ooh. they see him. Arrow oh, misses sorry. again, but yeah, no, no risks done. taken there. Make it. Dyer's middle tower is under uh, attack. They are hesitant here, Fly to Moon. It is, of course, a dire outpost, so they could buy back TP in the Marana, and their morph is on the other side of the map, hitting golems. So they play it safe. The arrow is, even though he hasn't hit these, it's really good pickup, especially How many with the Aetherlands. They just got? Telekinesis into arrow every single time if you want. Of course, the range is not so much gold longer. for that. Wait, what the hell? Disruption in the mid lane. Aloha Dance looks like he's going to say goodbye to his his arrow. Yeah. A moment ago, it was a 2k lead, and now it's 6. And they've only got 2 bounty runes so far. So if Liquid trade evenly here, might pull it back to a 4k. But the most important thing right now is Rubik's dead. They're going to go aggressive Oh, the swap mid. onto Iceberg. He's going to use his boat immediately. And that means he's virtually unkillable, at least for this duration. In the meantime, find the Undying move. again on the backside. Very sloppy play from Fly to Moon. Iceberg stunned up next to the Tier 1 tower. He's going to get initiated on by Mickey with that Diffusal Blade, and they will melt through him and will likely get this Tier 1 tower as well. So just death after death, one by one from Fly to Moon. 
Yeah, they got caught a bit with their pants down there, and they what, they still don't have the E blade, right? So you're just not fallen. you're just not ready. A dying gets run at by Peel. I mean, that's it's a, the thing. It's an he's awful had money matchup. for it for like two anything. minutes now. Yeah, he's he's not really wanted to go to buy it because maybe they were worried about map control in the area that he would go through wards from Liquid. Uh, many heroes were missing. You're playing against Moonlight Shadow. It's dangerous. Uh, so played it safe. Now eventually does go and get it. Now that they showed their faces mid, but cost them quite a lot. Um, has it now though? So we'll see. But this is going to be how most fights are going to go down. Mickey will doppelganger in and run at the Undying and kill him. Every fight, probably. He just kills this guy straight up. There's no really easy solution for Flight of Moon except if the Kunkka is in the perfect position together with Plop. Oh. Top lane, the the blink out from Boxy. My goodness. If only Undying came with a stun, he could do something about this. But he will decay and run away in shame, knowing that he picked Undying. <laughs> You're such a hater. <laughs> Here's the smoke from Liquid. So Five-man smoke as well. And okay, very close to finishing the Manta style. It's going to be a Moonlight Shadow now. They want a bigger kill than this Undying, but they'll find him. And Not bad. They'll have to that be was, happy with that. That was nice from Flight of Moon. Or, well, from uh, from Always Wanna Fly, rather. I think he had the read that this was happening. And he throws in his body for information. This is uh, very good. Because now when they spawn, they can take initiative. They know there's no Moonlight they Shadow now, and that's a pretty scanning. big deal for the upcoming fight. There's not that movement speed bonus. There's not the surprise factor. Uh, you can try to take the uh, take the initiative now with something like a Kunkka X Mark, or maybe a Rubik can get a lift with Lens, and then Liquid's escape plan is a lot harder to execute. So I would mean, love to see Flight the... take initiative right now. We talked about the item timing. So the E Blade obviously online. Kunkka just got his BKB, so that and should be the going point on here. Yes, they Greaves have so are finished, many although good items. General is not really close to this smoke gank. Let's see if he ends up free. Range. the leap opener. It's like telekinesis. Oh, nice disruption. Always want to fly. He's going to pop his ult. Do you notice it? No, because E Blade does enough damage, Cinderin. Morphling is too good. They're going to continue on. Always want to fly. He's to get stunned up. Mickey. Doppelgang's up. Just diffusing all that mana. Has his Manta style now online. X oh, marks no, the spot yeah. into the boat. Doppelganger in just a moment. He's going to get stunned up. Takes very little damage. Doppelgang's out. Looks like the Mars ult is going to be used to very little effect here. It's Iceberg BKB showing that off for the first time. Murana is the only death in this fight thus far. But very little mana on the side of Fly to Moon. Iceberg is basically it. Always want to fly. Looks like he's going to sacrifice his body for the betterment of society. And looks like Iceberg is next on the list. So Liquid coming out on top. A two for one as they will continue to chase. Looks like Vtoon will probably get out. Is the blink already expanded? Oh. Is under attack. That's a that kill with Etherlands. <laughs> on, uh, on Boxy? Yeah, if he had lens, that was a kill. <laughs> he could have pinned him. Oh, they're going to get a Roche. I think they're pretty happy with that exchange. I feel like Aegis it's a bit, it's a bit naive. Down. You can see where they're coming from trying to go up for the peel there because Doppelganger is already used, but you're still playing into Disruption and Swap and you're diving behind the mid-tier 2 tower and you've already used Ghost Ship. So the ship expires, Liquid just regroup, and they play PL, like you're supposed to play PL in this kind of fights, weaving in and out, buying time. And once the cooldowns are expended, Flight of Moon, they're just out of juice. There's no Tombstone, there's no Sonic Wave, there's no Kunkka Boat, and PL was still way above half health, so he was super fine with his hood build, Manta Diffusal. Uh, it's starting to look really grim for the Radiant, actually, at this point. This is the state of the game, or the part of the game, rather, where they should have been winning. Uh, and Liquid just equalized it. Aegis on PL, yeah. he's getting big. Looking at a Scotty currently. That's his yeah, next that should item. be a uh, nice juicy pickup for him. I wonder why he likes Scotty over Abyssal here. It seems like a really good Abyssal game. It's that, it's it's that regen, negative regen, Cinder, and against Undying. Oh my god, that's so good. I guess it's pretty good against Morphling's attribute ship. That too. I should have said that first. Oh, Marana bottom lane. All right. That was way too easy. I mean, he doesn't have BKB yet, of course, so is susceptible. I'm not sure if that would have mattered in that case, though. The initiation from Aloha Dance. Very nice. Yep. I mean, right now, Marana is not feeling like your, your second carry, as it were, right? As you typically would see. It's basically PL is monstrous, and then there's everybody else yeah. on the team that's just kind of there. 
But I think the downfall of Fly the Moon so far, of course, it's not out of reach yet since they are still technically winning on a net worth perspective, but they gave up those three kills one by one by one, which turned into a tier yeah. one tower, and then the next big fight after that was the Roshan Dyer fight. So, oh, kind the of swap. A big turnaround. Oh, they're going to find him. And the Mars ult used to take out Undying, so that's two supports easily cleaned up. As PL is now on a killing streak. As you can yeah, tell, I, a very glowy figure. I very much agree. Like, Flight of Moon actually had like a 6k gold lead, and then they had three heroes get picked off one by one, and they lost their Morph Courier, which delayed his E Blade by two minutes. Even though he hadn't bought the Eagle Song, like you said, maybe Flight of Moon could have escorted him there to get it. Because they kind of missed a timing in the game where they would have been insanely powerful. Uh, and Liquid just took huge advantage from uh They just took full advantage of it. Swung the game, and now this. Those are the those are the two moments for me. That one with the three deaths, and then the dive behind the mid tier two is really what has put Liquid in a good spot in the game. And both things, Flight of Moon had a decent amount of agency over. To be honest, it was definitely something they could have controlled a lot better. Oh, and Dying just found his item, Cinder, a craggy coat. It's what he's oh. always <laughs> wanted in life. I, I was Armor. like, I'm gonna check his inventory. What did he buy? What value did he get? I, was, I was thought you're like, oh, buckler. <laughs> He oh, found it in the right jungle. Here. Well, somebody found it in the jungle. I don't know what they're doing with it yet. Not uh, yeah. We'll see. Maybe it's not. Maybe he doesn't even want it. It's on Rubik. That's oh, what I on... thought. It's good oh, on Rubik yeah. as well. Okay. But there is there's something to be said about putting it on Undying as well. Armor is very cost efficient on this hero because you get health from your ulti. Um, but yeah. Oh, they're going to run it. Oh, Insania getting blown up. But looks like Shadow Demon is going to save him for now. Sonic Wave into three heroes as the Mars ult commences. Morphling getting very low. This will be a huge kill. And it starts off with just that trade that Liquid was wanting. As a tombstone will be taken out very quickly. So it's a two for one. Undying more for Venge. They'll why, take that are they, why are they initiating a team fight with their Kunkka in the other side of the map in the jungle? I feel like he's way too integral right now. I mean, yeah, Murano was also missing for Liquid, but I think Kunka plays a way bigger role for his team than Murano does for hers right now. Uh, taking a team fight like that without Kunka, it's, it's easy for us to say. We see the whole map, right? But if you look at the state of the game and what time it is, I think Kunka needs to be involved. When they make any team move, he needs to be there Radiance bottom uh, tower to be a part of that. Attack. That was extremely costly. Now they might lose Quap as well if Tyga oh, almost got him. No Aether Lens for Shadow Demon. Does have True. the cast range talent, but it's only 75. So, of course, once he gets this blink dagger, which will be very shortly, uh, he'll be able to make moves like that much easier. Titan Sliver now picked up for Flight of Moon. That's a really good morphling item. Holy crap. You can see X onto Boxy, but there's the disruption again. These disruptions have been on point for Taiga. He's going to get swapped by Insania. But going to try to turn this around onto the Queen of Pain, who's pinned into the arena, into the arrow. No chance to do anything. Always want to fly. Always want to die. More like it. A two for zero. And this is just snowballing out of control for Liquid Cinderin. Yep. It's a great position on the map for them to play with their... Uh... With their Aegis advantage as well, getting up here as Radiant in general is very difficult. Um, but when you're also fighting into Aegis, when the enemy team is back, oh no, they're going to lose a lower dance as well. They're just hemorrhaging kills. It's a one by one, save your friend syndrome. Sounds like the Aegis has been taken back from Roche, but it matters not. Another support kill and another tower more than likely. It kind of feels like Flight of Moon just lost focus a little bit at one point. Um, it's almost like it happened right after the pause, basically. We had this short pause for like 30 seconds, and then since then it's been going a bit downhill. I'm not going to blame the pause, though. That's not the point. I think but they were listening to the really. stream on delay, of course, and they were just so shocked during the pause about our revelations about Terrorblade and his history mm. in Dota. I mean, he used to be the brother of Anti-Mage. That's no longer as well. That's another thing we could have brought up. And it just completely changed their mindset, Cinder, and it blew their mind. The prize is so, much because he's not the brother anymore, we needed the uh, the new female Antimage disciple. So that that's right. Antimage has somebody for his narrative. So that's good. I wonder if part of that lore would be terribly sister. That would be actually a great nod to Dota 1. It's always one of Fly's going to die again. Tombstone taken out very quickly. <laughs> she was an agent all along. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I was like, go get trained by AM. I wish I, I like knew more it. about lore. That's some... Um, some medieval times espionage. All right, tell me 
I understand that Nether Shawl is really I, okay. I, I guess I understand. I mean, 25% magic resist is huge. 8% spell damage is great, and the minus armor makes literally no difference on the hero like Morphling. Uh, I guess in any other game, attack. Titan Sliver would be the choice in that case, right? It's on Conquer right now, but that I feel like percentage-based items, percentage-based anything on Morphling is god tier. Yeah, I don't I don't know if the Shawl is is better than Paladin Sword at this point, to be honest. Like. What's the you big magic paladin sword over sliver? No, over the shawl. Because they have a paladin sword too, right? He's going to take quickening. No, mm -hmm. wait, it's going to somebody else. Uh, sliver they didn't play on musical chairs, Morph. Now it's very good items. on both. Uh, I get what you mean because when Morph has a lot of agility, obviously the base damage increase is insane from the <clears throat> from the sliver. But maybe the status resistance here. The expectation is that Kunkka will be taking more stuns and Morph will be playing around them a bit better because of mobility. Mm. Um, with his BKB now finished, could be a chance here. But it's definitely looking very grim. Liquid and firm control of the game, with or without Aegis. PL now has Scotty. They need to get through 3,000 HP, and yeah. they have a little lot dance again. He's literally surrounded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Disruption plus PL on the other side. You have no escape. Uh, it doesn't have a force or attack. anything like that. It just has the blink dagger. So ultra aggressive in terms of item boost. And that is a tier two tower for Liquid, as here we go again. All right, let's do some more Dota 2 trivia. If you're listening, Fly the Moon, maybe you can reverse your fortune by hearing some amazing Dota 1 mechanics that have changed. Uh, let's see if I can think of one. <laughs> Hold on. I'm just looking at the heroes in the game, how they changed since Dota 1. We already talked about Undying to Death. Morphling's not interesting. He was basically the same. Uh, I mean, he was similar from the original so Dota 2 concept. In Dota 1, in Dota 1, Kunkka could only Tidebringer enemy creeps. In Dota 2, at one point, he could Tidebringer denies, and then he couldn't anymore. Or was that the whole time? How long was it? Was it he couldn't, then he could, then he couldn't? Or was it he could the whole time until he couldn't? There's too many options, Cinderin. I could don't even understand your question Could you deny with Tidebringer anymore. all the Dota 2 history until it got removed? I remember Dota 1 for sure you could do that. Dota so 2, there's a difference I, I there. Feel like, no, I feel like, yeah, beginning yeah. of Dota 2, you, you could do that as well. I guess that's that's probably fair. Yeah. What did what did PL's skill used to be before Doppelganger? Was it like just his ult and juxtapose were he had um, separated into multiple skills? He had the old, his, was it his second spell? Wasn't that one called Juxtapose where he just became invisible and spawned one illusion? Oh, yeah, that was so bad. I hated was that what it that was called? Spell. Was that called Juxtapose? No, no it wasn't, right? Uh, no, I, I don't even think it was called Doppelganger. What was it called? Or maybe it was, no, maybe it was nah, Doppelganger. I don't know. I don't know. It, it's had different it's, iterations, actually. I think there's even been another iteration that I don't know. But remember. he didn't have Phantom Rush. That was a passive as well, uh, I think. It was a, some sort of passive. Yeah, he had something else than Phantom Rush as well. Man, that hero has actually been changed quite a lot. I don't even remember. Shockingly but in enough. Dota 1, Mars, Mars was one of the trees in the forest, and now he's a hero. Maybe he was one of the trees in the forest. Like in the top left? No, yeah, he was just one of the trees. There was a tree on the map called Mars, if you moused over it. Are you trolling me? No. You're trolling me. That doesn't even make any sense, Cinderin. Well, in order for it to be a change, he had to be in the game, right? Or I can't just... It's not. I'm not going to be talking about a change if All I right, say how about, in Dota okay, 1 well, it wasn't there and now it is. You know, that's Yeah, not a Mars was not a hero in Dota 1. I don't know if you guys know this. That is trivia number two today. So <laughs> you can use that on your friends. Um, All right, what else we got? There's got to be some interesting ones. Venge, I feel like very little... Here's a great trivia. Talents were not a thing in Dota 1. I don't mm. know if you guys know this. Including this on relatively, Venge. Relatively, yes. On, Venge did not have talents either, in addition to no talents being in the game. Um, Vengeance aura used to only be damage. Now it's primary attribute and attack range. Yeah, that's very recent, though. Venge used God. to not spawn an illusion when she died. Uh, these are actually way worse. Than Nether I swap used to work. have one charge. <laughs> Venge used to be fun to play. How about <laughs> stuff like that? <laughs> <Cinderella>? <laughs> that PL could be said about a lot been... of heroes this patch. <laughs> PL has always been an absolute piece of garbage to play against. That has never changed, um, which is unfortunate. 
because the concept is cool. All right, here's, here's some trivia. Shadow Demon, when first introduced in Dota 1, was a mid-hero. He was played mid competitively. What do you remember about him, Cinderin? Shadow Demon mid? Yeah. What do I remember about him? He had the yes. same spells, pretty much. <laughs> Why was mean? he mid? That's what I'm asking. I don't know. God, you're supposed to be the analyst. All right, I'll play the analyst role. He was mid because people were really, really bad back then. And they wow, didn't that's know great analysis. Be I, I should have definitely... <laughs> I should have That's said that. That's why Lion was mid, Lich was mid, Ooh, Shadow Demon sick. mid. Guys, just think about how god awful that was to play. Sounds fine. We're being corrected by chat. They obviously have delayed. The PL second spell is called Double Walk. That's right. Oh, it's called yeah, that's walk. right. Yeah, good call, guys. That yeah, is true. I totally forgot that because, like everybody else except five people, I hated the hero, so I didn't really play it. Did you guys know that Shadow Walk was on several heroes and it was also called Shadow Walk on every hero? Gondar, uh, Clinks, and I think one more, probably. Taiga is gonna probably find a disruption not. here into the arrow, but Oof. no, Vtoon pops the BKB. That is a, I believe, 10 seconds, indeed. I think it's- They know that's down. I think it's impossible. This is one of those mechanics, right? Where if you get disrupted and there's an arrow on top of you, you can still BKB if you mash it. I think you get it mm -hmm. off every time, uh, even if yeah. the arrow is perfect. So v getting out there because of that. But yeah, they forced the BKB, which is obviously great. 10 second error, like you said, and Roche is up. So maybe this prompts Liquid to, if not go for Roche, then start playing in the area with a smoke and look for a kill. And Sanya already has it ready. He's pushing out mid. Uh, by the way, has a lot of net worth for a five. We haven't really talked about that this game, but he has Helm of the Dominator and Vlad's for his team, two insane auras and a wolf creep. So he's a huge boon for his squad. Even if he dies, he does so much. Um, we have a smoke here from Fly to Moon. General is somewhat baiting, but it looks like hmm, nothing will come of that initially. Basher now online for McKay. So he, well, I say online, it's on his courier, so it's being delivered right now. But he is looking uh, virtually unkillable. Once this abyssal comes yeah. up, which I assume that's what he will upgrade next. Good lord. Abyssal, AC on the Mars. So Liquid have so many auras, right? Wolf aura, Vlad's aura. Radiant uh, are scanning. The Dom. Oh, oh, we're gonna have the Mars. Oh, they got the opening on Kunka. Kunka is gonna be their opening kill potentially. He doesn't even have Radiance on right now. It's still disabled from that gank attempt. Iceberg getting extremely low. Might get out swapped back into death, but no. Soul Rip will keep him healthy for now, but finally goes down. That is a huge kill to start this fight. Looks like E-Blade was not enough to get an actual kill. Double kill for Koikfa as we have another pause. So back to trivia we go. Did you guys know in Dota 1 that Roshan <laughs> had the Aegis, of course, but you could also buy the eight. No, wait, he dropped cheese. He didn't have Aegis. He dropped he cheese, right? He didn't drop cheese either. Oh, he didn't drop cheese anything? Cheese didn't exist. There was a version where you could buy Aegis, and it came with three yeah, charges, three and charges. it gave armor and magic resist, and it was undroppable. So when it ran out of charges, you just had a dead inventory slot with armor and magic resist. Wait, what And did then Roshan if you bought a second then? one, huh? What did Roshan He didn't drop, drop anything. He gave 800 gold per player in the killing team. He was worth 4k oh. gold, but he was okay. really strong. Oh, yeah, Aegis got introduced that. later, and then the bounty, I think, of Roche was... I think in the same patch, Roche's bounty was reduced to... I want to say 200 per player, but it might still have been a bit more. And then cheese came later. That's how I remember it, at least. But man. All right, another trivia. So In funny. Heroes of New Earth, Cinderin. Never mind. <laughs> As we're going to be unpausing here. Always want to fly. Looks like he's probably going to go down here. So it's a three for one, and all Liquid lost was a Vengeful Spirit. Koikfa with that double damage. So Roche will likely fall now next. I think I can and finish your... Getting... Your thing from before about you called it Shadow Walk, right? It was called Wind Walk in Dota One, but yeah, Bounty Hunter had it. What was the other one you said? Clinks. Clinks had it. Shadow Blade, called Lothar's, but I think the ability was yeah. called Wind Walk. Lothar's. Okay. And I think the Brewmaster Ulti Storm Panda also had Wind Walk. So it was four okay. four things called Wind Walk in the game. Uh, That's right. I don't know why I said Shadow Walk. You're right. It was Wind Walk. I mean, that was from Warcraft Three, though. I believe the whoever the Juggernaut character was. 
original Warcraft 3 hero that had Windwalk, I believe. Yep, true. Oh, that's not a good TP. He has yeah. to cancel that one on Rubik. Oh boy. And he has to walk he all the way from top. Oh, yeah. Well, that will cost them at the very least a tower, although I don't know if his presence would have made a difference. And it's going to be a free racks, essentially. Yeah, they're going to keep going. Back. They have Aegis cheese, all their auras. Kogfa even backpacking the cheese instead of an empty bottle. That's a that's a manly play. It's a hardcore play. <laughs> yeah. In Dota One, there didn't used to be bottle until much later in the in the game. Yeah. Very good trivia during the game. You guys like during game trivia? It's always one of probably going to take the brunt of the damage from Mickey. Still has the Aegis intact, and there's the Basher going to town on him. Does get slowed enough for him to back up, but of course this is a second rack at the end of the day. Aegis oh, still nice online. Spear. Oh, nice spear into the tree. They're going to go onto this Morphling. It's going to be close before this boat comes in. It does connect at the last second, but he is finally taken out. Does have buyback if he wants to use it. Aegis has been expended. A trade Liquid will take. No doubt about it. And that is a second Rax, and GG is called for game one of this best of three between Liquid and a Fly at the Moon, Cinderman. And now we have to see going into game two how Fly to Moon adjusts, right? I, I like talking about this when there's a team that's lost less in a tournament. Like you've won two series against good teams, you two owed them both. Now you lost. How do you adapt? Like, is it because you got figured out? Did you have a bad game? Um, was your strategy still fine? Because Fly to Moon were doing very well in this game for big portions, especially the early mid part. Uh, and then they kind of just lost their way in the game a little bit, got killed off a couple of times, dove the mid tower, and lost their whole lead. Um, what do they do in game two? Do they make big draft adjustments? Do they pick kind of the same and just feel like, okay, guys, we dropped the ball here. It's fine. Reset for next game. Because, uh, you know, team like you, um, you gotta, you gotta stay on it. Yeah, it, it was, I mean, I felt like they had complete control of that game, Cinderin. And they had like really important item time is going coming their way. Kunkka was get he got his radiance morphling again. We had that weird timing with the courier getting killed. And he just didn't want to walk over and actually finish his E blade. That's when they actually started losing. They didn't really fight with the radiance at first. They waited a little bit too long, and then yeah. they got picked off one by one, and they had a really bad fight. And then with that uh, morph or not morphling, but PL took over the game. So tough to come back from that. Yeah. But that was. Game, unless you want to speak more, Cinder, we can talk about more Dota 2. No, I was Dota just going to say, make it, make like. it ends with uh, with zero deaths on the PL. So they definitely didn't manage to really shut down PL, which was obviously the big win condition for Liquid. Didn't find any kills on him. Taiga 7, 1, and 15. Honestly, a pretty incredible Shadow, uh, Shadow Demon performance. This yeah. Game. He made so really many good moves. Clutch saves multiple times in a row against Kunkka. He set up arrows for his team. Uh, he even won the bottom lane together with Boxy. Or, well, I don't know if they won, but, you know, relative to how it started out, they recovered it very nicely. So uh, I think Taiga played a, a standout game here. He was my my favorite individual performer, I think, for the game. I agree. Completely agree. Uh, but that is just game one of this best of three. We'll see if Fly to Moon can come back in this series. We shall return very shortly for game two, my friends, and more Dota 1 trivia, which I know you're all looking forward to.